2018, I was part of a restoration project helping to repair Westminster Hall. So specifically the 26 angels that make up the trusses of the medieval roof. I developed a real appreciation and love of the angels, having spent hundreds of hours working to repair them, but also the skill of the medieval craftsmen. Being able to see the chisel marks of the medieval carvers from hundreds and hundreds of years ago was incredible. As a traditional woodcarver myself, I was so inspired by Westminster Hall that I would often arrive early each day to work and simply sit there and, and sketch and study the angels. As time went on, I really wanted to make my own angel based off the ones in the hall. I used all of those sketches and sizes and dimensions that I'd gathered over the months to distill that into a scale model of an angel that I then carved. Westminster Hall was completed in 1099 by William Rufus, William the Conqueror's son, for feasting on a grand scale. In the 1390s, Richard II rebuilt the roof. There are 13 trusses altogether. These are the very large arched members and 26 hammer beams which project from the wall. On the end of each of these horizontal members, the king's master carpenter commissioned angels flying out of clouds and holding the king's shield. The significance of the angels represents the divine power given by God to the king to rule over England. The fact that each angel is holding the king's shield, his heraldic achievement, which is also that of England, showing the three lions and the fleur-de-lis of France, indicates the authority vested in him uh, as Christ's representative on earth. The angels have witnessed so much in the 600 years that they've been situated in the roof. Some of the most notable events are the great feasts which were held on a regular basis in the hall, the grandest of which were the coronation banquets held after the long service in Westminster Abbey nearby. The angels have also witnessed the state trials or treason trials which were held in the hall, most notably King Charles I where the tables were turned against the king by the House of Commons and he was tried for treason in the hall in 1649 and condemned to death. So I begin by selecting a really high quality piece of English oak and lay on the stencil of the angel and start doing the basic cuts just to get the, get the rough outline. The English oak that we use is primarily quarter sawn oak, so it's a very high quality cut of the, the tree and it means that the oak is very clean, reliable and stable when I'm carving it throughout it's really important to us that we use English oak because the original roof and angels would have been carved out of English oak. The next stage is to then rough out the design. So using a V tool, I follow the lines of the profile that I've drawn onto the angel and I start really trying to get the rough shapes um, bulked out, which I'll then add detail on further down the line. 
One of the main things you're trying to do when you're carving is to add shadow into a piece. And so really that's all carving is. So it's just manipulating light and creating those kind of shadowy pocket areas, which is why the angel design is so effective. If you think in the hall, they're so high up in the roof, they need to be visible. And so areas like the clouds um, and also within the shield kind of trap a lot of shadow. So I really make sure I try and bring that into these pieces as well. Interestingly, each angel in the hall, the dimensions of aspects such as the shield, the medieval clouds are actually all the same. So it works as a whole um, architectural piece within the hall. Whereas the detailing on the angels, the carvers had a lot of freedom. So areas such as Richard II's shield, they could interpret the lions how they wanted to. And also the hand positions of the angels holding the shield and the drapery and even their faces were all different throughout the hall. These angels are based on one of my favourite angels in the hall, which is the angel on the east side on Trust 3. And I liked it because it had a little bit of a smile on its face and I spent weeks and weeks helping to restore this particular angel, so I have quite a strong connection with it. The beauty of these angels is that, although they're based off a specific one in the hall, each one is going to be unique in that they're hand-carved, so there's slight nuances within each one. As the angel progresses, I end up using smaller and smaller chisels to try and capture all those little bits of detail within the angel. So, for example, the angel's fingernails, the fleur de lis and the lion's faces. It's all really important to try and get in that detail to kind of bring it to life. As a final mark of authenticity, we burn on a stamp onto the back of the angel, which includes the portcullis E3, which denotes the East Side Trust 3 angel and my name onto the piece. Each angel will come with a specially crafted booklet all about the history of the angels and the project to repair them, but also a certificate of authenticity. The final stage of making the angels is to brush on really high quality sealant, so to protect the angels. Uh, this is a matte based product which brings to life the character of the angels and really helps to finish it off. Being able to carve these angels using the same skills as the medieval carvers for other people to enjoy and appreciate is incredibly special. To recreate these special parts of Westminster Hall is a significant moment for Parliament, but made more special by the fact that Will has carved them as he's such an important part of the story of Westminster Hall's roof.